Hello guys, my name is Russian Badger, and this map, man, like Zen Crossing is so goofy. It's essentially, do you want to get shot in the face at the front door or the back door? And you die equally as fast at either one of those locations, but... Okay, so this first guy, I think he was trying to tie his shoes. I wasn't exactly sure, but he was like bending over, spinning around. I, I feel slimy now. Although I got a two-piece, I feel very slimy now because... I don't know, just the thought that, you know, Carl was just trying to tie his shoelaces and I had to shoot him in the back. I feel very... Sorry for him. Okay, okay. this is essentially the tactic. I would go up to the top floor, drop down C4, and get unlimited kills and girlfriends and gamer points. Like, okay, there's one, but look at this second one. Okay, I accidentally put some on the ledge, and it blew out part of the wall. Look at this. Get dunked on. Like, that's, that's like a KFC bucket worth of kills. At the time, I thought it was like 12, but it's only 5 in reality. I don't know how many's in a KFC bucket. I know KFC's really big in... Okay, KFC is really big in the South and also in Asia, right? So I need one of you to explain formally what... How much is in a bucket? I need, like, a standard answer, like... Well, you see, Badger, the standard size of a KFC bucket is 9 pieces in the United States and 12 pieces in... Like, I needed a standard answer like that. I don't know what the standard bucket size is. I don't even know why I want to know that information, but... I wish I knew. And yet I get another double kill. I believe I get one more of those before I leave this location, but it's it's essentially creating a physical barrier that you cannot bypass. And what I mean by that is, like, look, if there's constant explosions in the front doorway, unless you're some sort of Iron Man or like, I don't know, if you're like Black Dynamite, you probably just like power through that. But yeah, there's another double kill. You can't get past it. I don't think you can. And I don't know how this guy snuck past. Like. Are you a wizard? How did he get past? I, I really don't understand. I don't know how he got by, but you might think the joke's on me, because obviously he shot me, he penetrated my skin with bullets, obviously killing me. But really, the joke's on him. Okay, you guys didn't see it, you guys didn't catch that. I don't know if you want to rewind, but you didn't catch the little rusty nail that he stepped on and went through his boot, and he now has tetanus, so... I would say I won that trade. I don't know about you guys, but I clearly won that trade. Like, if you were to ask me, Badger, would you rather die or have tetanus? I would die a thousand deaths before I would get tetanus because nobody likes lockjaw, all right? And w Wally, this Wally thought he was Master Yi, but clearly his skills are inferior because you can't backdoor on Zen Crossing. You just can't do it. Like, okay, and, and okay, this is sort of gonna play in the yeah, GTFO, Wally. I, I, okay, this is essentially what the logic of the opposing team was: front door, no work; back door, must work. Right? It was essentially. Okay, we're getting shut out in the front door, let's try the back door, and that was equally as bad, because I did the exact same thing. Granted, I didn't go up to the top floor this time, I decided to go on the second floor because... I guess the fifth floor is just too high, and okay, look, like, it's so simple, because... Okay, as soon as I saw three people coming back here, I basically knew they were gonna start flooding, because... I, I don't know if you guys know this, and I get the two-piece and the biscuit making three, and it's not a three-piece and a biscuit, it's a two-piece and a biscuit with a three-man total. Okay. But I essentially knew, and you noticed this, there is much of a, a follower's mentality in a lot of the Battlefield city maps, if you ask me. And sometimes you're forced to. Like, I mean, obviously, if you're not going front door, you're going back door, or that, well, that side door on Zen Crossing coming in a B is deadly, but you'll notice that in a lot of Battlefield city maps. Like... People follow other people, and you notice that so much. And I couldn't cut the glass with C4 on it, but I still got somebody. That's a crazy blast radius, but... Okay, this guy, this guy tried to sneak up on me, right? And he's coming up, and... Bang! I'm... Just kidding, nobody comes up. I, I had you going there for like a split second, I could tell. You're... Like, the hair on your forearm is starting to creep, and you're like, oh my god. And no, nobody came up. But yet another double kill. Like, this is quite humorous if you ask me. And I was... Okay, I wasn't tossing that down for any sort of infantry purpose. I was trying to sort of get the lav, and it wasn't quite far enough. Like, obviously, you can't jump toss like you could in Bad Company 2. In Bad Company 2, I can easily, easily destroy that lav, but you can only sort of drop it because I guess your character has really weak forearms or something like that. I don't really understand, but one more time, and okay, look. I always thought, like, this base, man. B is so nonsensical. And one last skadoosh and one last kill. I got Wodo so many times. I felt very, very sorry. I was like, Carl, if I could go out and buy you a cookie right now, I totally would. And you guys have that effect on me. Now, now, okay. I think a lot of you know that I try to be a considerate individual 
but when it comes to Battlefield 3, I talk way too much trash and smack in the chat. Like, I am very, very inconsiderate, if you ask me. In my personal opinion, I'm very inconsiderate in the chat. Like, constantly taunting the enemy, you know, get dunked, how does it feel to get destroyed this quickly? And like, I even taunt my own team sometimes. And I'm, I'm trying to cut back on it, but I just can't stop. Like, I'll say, if you guys were any heavier, I'd have to wear a back brace. But then again, I do carry a lot of the time without... And good morning, Carl, but... You guys know that a lot of the time, my teammates are very, very awful, and I have to carry the team anyway, so I guess the taunting's somewhat appropriate, but... And I... That guy! That guy, man! Baby Bailey! I got him so many times, and... Okay, check it out. Okay, look at this. Look at this accuracy, bro. Look at this accuracy, bro, Cookie. Oh my god, man. Oh my god. <laughs> and this area here, you know you can totally shut down the spawn? The one counter to it? six RPGs at once. That's six. You're up. That's five. That's six. Okay. Like, you guys know, if you get up there, alright, if you get up there, that's essentially a lot of the time the end of that base because you shut down their spawn so hard. Like, one guy could hold down the majority of the team all because he has that height advantage, he has some cover, and he looks down directly into your spawn. I think the spawn for the defensive team on this base is horrifying, but... It's essentially a lot of the times the end of the base. If you can and Rosin Shun, uh, that cloth monster. I don't know why it didn't work the first time, but I get this gentleman here, and it's weird because you know most of the time once you get up there, that's the end of the base because you shut down their spawn and there's no way they can even get close to the objectives. But RPGs counter that, so I, I guess that's a very very good idea. And I get the two piece here, and this was really weird for me. This was really really weird. Okay, look, I go around the corner, I get this gentleman here over, he's like behind those blue, like green boxes, okay. And then I run back around because I see a lot of guys are creeping over on my left side of my radar, and look at this. Like, okay, I'm prepared for the guy, okay, I get this guy here really simply. But I'm prepared for this guy, and, okay, I'm healing up. And I'm prepared for this guy, but then he runs inside, and I had like the biggest, what moment, like what? And I, I thought it was lag at first, but there was a guy standing behind him. I was like, oh, okay, I'm not going to get this guy ran inside, but like, what? Why did, why did my bullets hit me? And good morning, Carl. Feel free to reload around the corner. And this guy was screaming for, oh, I get the cloth monster too, but this guy was screaming for a revive, and it was like the worst time. And, it, okay, good thing there's two of us, and he didn't even get either one of us, but that's like another debate. Do you always straight up go for the revive, or do you just run up and Ross and Chow, Cloth Monster? And I get one more gentleman here, and that's the end of the base. Baby Bailey, man, so many times. But that's another, like, it depends. You know, city maps, larger maps with lots of vehicles. Do you guys usually go for the, the whole, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna Rambo everybody in the opposing team and then revive? Or are you just like, bro, I'm running around with my paddle 24-7. That's, I think I'm more of I'm gonna kill people and then revive, like revive comes second, but you guys still know that I, you guys still know that I, I try to revive as much as possible. And okay, I wanted to finish that thought. I know you guys know that I'm very like, you guys know this, like it's, it's a blatant example right now. I, I rose the, or I broached the subject of the chat, right? And then I totally disconnected from it. Okay, I wanna finish the, the idea of the chat, okay? Now, instead of taunting, I find myself doing the little, you know, here is cookie, you know, that little, Whatever that is, you know, here is cookie if you revive. I, I, f I just use that as like a universal taunt now. And people get really sad about it. And I find it so funny. Just because instead of like a conventional taunt, you're not saying like get dunked bro or something like that. You're just saying, okay, here is cookie. Like you just stomp the opposing team and you say, I'm sorry for defeating your team. Here is cookie. Like people get so mad. It's so funny. It's so funny. But okay, that's the end of that point. And I want to move on to... You saw some terrible accuracy a few seconds ago. It's essentially how I've adapted to suppression. And, oh my god, spawn revival. You see that, like, few... Okay, I would definitely say this is partially my fault and partially a bit of catfishery on Dice's part. I think the spawn invincibility is... It's a tricky subject, right? Because when you spawn in, you want it, right? You always get really frustrated when you spawn in and insta die. I think we all get very frustrated at that. But at the same time, it's even more frustrating when... Oh, I fell two feet and I broke my knees and I took out two-thirds of my health. They're like, that was like 80% of my health. But 
you know, spawn invincibility, very frustrating. Like, you always hate it when you get insta-killed as soon as you spawn. But then again, when you're trying to wipe out a whole squad and you're shooting a guy that has spawn invincibility and you're wasting bullets, that's very annoying. But it's one of those things that I think we just have to put up with. Like, yes, it's annoying to be shooting at somebody that's invincible and wasting your bullets when you should be shooting at somebody that can actually take damage. But at the same time, that gentleman's probably at a black screen. You know the fading black screen that's really annoying? So... If he can't see anything, I think he should be invincible for that split second, but I think it's one of those things that we just have to put up with. It's not like blood boiling, but it's definitely very annoying. And you see at this range, okay, I get him in the dome piece, but you saw a few minutes ago, I was I was shooting a gentleman in that general vicinity as well, but I was not killing them, but I saw they were shooting at something, and obviously if you see enemies shooting, they're shooting at your teammates, derp. So at that range, oftentimes I will just shoot at them just to suppress them. Like I'm not even intending to kill them, I don't even have to be accurate, but you can suppress them and save your teammates. That's something that I notice very often. I know you're thinking, Russian Badger, teamwork, what? But, okay, I get one gentleman here, I got the Glock for you ninja, get a second guy, and at long last a friendship has been brought to an end by Kung Fu treachery. Oh man, like, that Kung Fu treachery. Like, it... He got really sad about it, too, in the chat. He got so sad, but you just can't stop it sometimes. Like, you guys noticed, and this is another great lurk spot. Just like the... You guys know at the first base, that double stack is such a great lurk spot. And I, yet again, I get Joshua straight in the dome piece with that last bullet. That's so satisfying. But eventually, they just... Like, they started firing RPGs, but they couldn't quite get enough off to stop me. Like, you know, you guys saw the first base. If you fire six RPGs at me, I'm gonna die. Like, it doesn't matter who I am, I'm clearly gonna die. But there comes a point where you can just lock down their spawn if you get in a certain location, and essentially that's where I... I know a lot of you get sad because I don't play the objective, but Wesley... Snipes, and that's so many coming out of the spawn. Like... It's almost impossible not to hit somebody from that range. Like, you guys know... Okay. You guys know that sometimes there's a point where you toss a grenade and you're like, Bro, there is no way that's going to get a single kill. There is no way. And then, what? Huh? What? How did that get three guys? Like, what? What? And that happens to me so often. Like, you know, you throw grenades. Like, bro, that is... Bro, cookie, that is so cash, bro. Like, that's clearly going to get, like, a quad. And it gets zero kills. And then you say, okay, this is like a random nade, there you go, and triple kill? Wait, what? Why did that happen? That's not supposed to happen, and that happens, that's basically my relationship with grenades. But, okay, I know you guys are going to ask, and I should be discussing it, but, okay, Battlefield Premium, I will just have a bonus clip for you. Because I think the bonus clip describes the service better than I do, and it's, okay, I think a bonus clip will describe it better than I can in words, and... Also, another bonus clip is going to address the patch, and I think overall the patch is very positive in my eyes. You know, they fixed the major things. I think you guys know what the major things are, but okay, DJ and I tested, and okay, you know what, I'll mention the bonus clip later. It's got a little bit of explanation, but I don't know what this... Good morning, Carl. He was very, very shady, just lurking in the darkness over there, but this is a third lurk spot, and... I know a lot of you, and I get this gentleman here, that was a lucky headshot. It looked like he was unlucky. Okay. I don't know if you can see his username, because that, that makes zero sense. Badger, I can't see his username. What does it mean? But okay, this is another great lurk spot that, yet again, it's not exactly always perfect, but you can definitely get some serious slaughtering kills. And another over... I always feel like, bro, I, bro Chacho, I was suppressing him. No, bro, I was suppressing him. I wasn't purposely missing with all of those bullets because I'm super inaccurate. I was suppressing him. Well, uh, whatever, but... This is another spot where if you get to it, you can shut down their spawn so easily, you essentially win the base for your team. And that's something else that I wanted to mention, and... Come here, you! He was trying to lurk around. That Carl, dude. Biggest Carl ever. But, okay. And I, like, see, it's so cash. Look at this spot. So cash. Like, so cash. And, okay. What I wanted to say was, I know a lot of you get sort of, I don't know about angry, but you guys, and I, of all, looks like I'm unlucky this time, if you know what I'm saying, bro. I, I don't know if you guys are watching the resolution where you can see his username, but I was definitely the unlucky one that time. And... Like, that was so nonsensical. Of all the places in the room, Badger, or should I say Carl, where you could have run, why did you run directly on top of the nade? Like, that's so bad. But, 
Okay, I wanted to mention that I know a lot of you get a little bit angry that I don't arm objectives all the time, and that's almost from experience, and it's not like, bro, I'm a battlefield veteran, you wouldn't understand, bro, chacho. I'm not trying to play the whole just now card at all, because I think you guys know at this point in time, I am no better than any of you, and I don't have any kind of, like, expert knowledge about any of this. I know so many players that are so much better than I. Like, the majority of you are probably better than I am, and I don't feel as if, as if I'm, like, any sort of authority. And, oh my god, Gooses was in this game as well, but... And I get another gen... Oh, he was unlucky that time. I'm never gonna stop with that, but... Okay. You guys know that I'm not really an authority on everything, or on anything at all, like... I probably have the same knowledge that you do about Battlefield for the most part, and a lot of you get a little bit ticked off that I don't directly arm objectives, like, oh, you don't PTFO badger because you don't arm objectives. <laughs> well, no, that's not exactly the way it works. What I, or at least in my experience, if I really need to carry a team, which is the majority of the time, like you guys know, it's very rare that I don't have to carry a team. Oftentimes I am on the the underdog downside, but I've noticed that the best way to carry a team, and it might be kind of catfish, you guys can, like that slimy catfishery badger, I, I'm not going to give you a cookie at all, ever. I, I think you guys can definitely say that, but I've noticed, if you really want to carry a team, the best way is to shut down the opposing team spawn and let your teammates arm the objectives. I know that sounds really weird, and it sounds like I'm not playing the objective, I'm just farming kills, but that's, that's kind of what it is. Like, I noticed that if I shut down the entire team via their spawn, like I don't, I, like you can't leave, you can't leave bro cookie, you can't, like you can't leave your spawn, I noticed that is much better for winning a game and carrying awful players compared to just running and arming it yourself because you die too much, there's too many times you die on the objective. So I notice if you just try to exterminate the enemy team, like find their spawn, cut it off and just pretty much sever the spawn or sever the opposing team from any sort of access to the objectives, your teammates will be smart enough to go up to the box and press E, okay? I, I think a lot of people or a lot of people that you're carrying can't really shut down a spawn very well, but they can go up and arm an objective, and that's that's really my strategy. I find it much easier to, instead of trying, my, trying to arm the objectives myself and getting shot in the face over and over and over and over again, having really unsuccessful attempts, I find it much easier to shut down their spawn and allow my teammates on the objectives. And the two-piece, no biscuit. Hopefully that makes sense. Like, essentially, I, I like to adopt my role to just killing as many people as I can and holding them away from the objectives of my teammates. I know that's sort of a different role. You can definitely regard it as not playing the objective if you want. I definitely consider it playing the objective. Like, yes, I'm not arming right now, but I'm making it so that every one of my teammates can get up and we can successfully, 100% of the time, I got a Glock for you, Ninja, defend the objective. And I don't know where this guy was, all right? This is like crouching tiger hidden spaghetti. I don't know where he was. Like, I, I to this day, I still have no idea. Like, where could he have survived from? He gets my... I try to revive... I don't I have no idea I don't think we were we were on the right angle to get shot from the road over in your left hand side I have no idea where that guy was but hopefully that sort of cleared it up I know a lot of you don't agree with me that that's not playing that's not playing the objective bad here I know a lot of you gonna say that but that's sort of the way that I've carried teams and that's the it and yet again I don't want to sound so egotistical that sounds egotistical when I'm saying that I'm carrying teams but oftentimes that is the reality like I'm not I'm not tooting my own horn here or any. Well, I partially am, but at the same time, it's pretty much a reality that oftentimes I am carrying the team because other team, like other teammates, are very, very heavy. If you ask me, but not trying to sound egotistical. Hopefully, I don't sound like a huge catfish. But that's just my two cents on it. Like essentially, shutting down a spawn will win you more games than trying to arm the objective directly every single time. That's just what I notice. That's just my whole opinion on the matter, but okay, that's about it, and for those of you that wanted me to do an entire commentary in German, I know a lot of you have asked for this, I don't think I could do it, like the entire, the entire thing would just be, es tut mir leid, ich weiß nicht, ich bin nicht sicher, and then over and over and over, bitte verzeihen Sie meine schlechten Deutschkenntnisse, ich bin Americano und ich bin nicht so intelligent, like that would be the entire commentary, so I don't think I could do it, and that addresses most of the questions that you guys have, and... For the bonus clip, I am going to... Okay, the bonus clip number one. Okay, the second bonus clip is going to describe what I think about Battlefield Premium. And the first bonus clip is 
what DJ and I, okay, DJ is a gentleman, he's he's max rank, he's rank 100, and he's been banned from so many servers because he just gets mad kills and like crazy KDs, like 260 and 1 in tanks. He's extreme, he's probably the best tank driver that I've ever seen. He's he is so good with tanks. He's he's Russian and he's like him in a T90 is like the end of the game. He, he's just so crazy in it, and because he always has such a jacked KD, because really all he does is tanks. He's been banned from every major server because everybody thinks he's hacking. So that's kind of his story. He has a channel where where he posts really really long vehicle gameplay. So if you want to see those, I will leave a a link to his channel description. And I think it's only fair because he helped me out with this. We were basically testing DJ and I. We were testing exactly how how like. Obviously, they're patching the dart and the mass in the next patch. So we just wanted, because we're never going to get this opportunity ever again, because obviously they're fixing it, and you'll never ever get an overpowered weapon like this ever again, we wanted just to see, for, for giggles, how far the range could be on the dart and the mass. And it's pretty crazy. Like, I think they get up to 40, 50 meters, something like that. But you'll see for yourself, I just wanted to sort of illuminate how broken this thing was. But obviously, it's getting fixed. So I just wanted to... It's almost like a memory of it. Like, we can look back at this video and remember how broken this thing was. But hopefully you guys enjoy it. I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und later. Grab it while you can, lads. Dosh, grab it while you can, lads.